Uh, I was interested uh, in your, your comments, if you would, about the, uh, the subsequent 1998 trial of Sam Bowers. You mentioned the four who were convicted back in the 60s. Right. But Sam Bowers was convicted 30 years later. I, I, I'd be interested to know what your family went through in order to get the uh, Attorney General and the local DA to, to bring Sam Bowers to trial in the 90s. We begged. We, we neighbors don't normally beg. But we begged, we, we, we pleaded with them to, to try to do something. And, and as you know, uh, well, perhaps you don't know, we asked. We, 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 we had this fact sheet that I'm referring to that mentioned all of these things. And it's, it's we used uh, the media. We used the National Council of Churches. We used every legitimate means we could to bring pressure upon elected officials to treat us the same way that they would have treated anybody else. Uh, we re also received um, um, individuals that were in position of authority, elected individuals, people holding positions. Some of us came, came to us and said, leave this alone. That's in the past. Go on, live your life. And, and, and my, our question to them was, how can you forget that somebody tried to kill you? They did kill your daddy, and they tried to kill the rest of us. Initially, uh, the district attorney that we had, Glenn White, wasn't overly interested, I don't believe, in helping us. Uh, he never did anything about the case. Uh, then Lindsey Carter was elected. Lindsey Carter and I had met in high school, way back in the day, they used to have a thing for local high school students called Senior High Quiz. Um, I was on the team for North Forest High School. Lindsey Carter was on the team for Brooklyn, Forest County HS. So Lindsey and I knew each other from then. And Lindsey was younger, and he listened to us. And Lindsey said that he would do what he could if we could get the records. Well, Glenn White had told us for years that he couldn't get the records, the, the uh, records from the FBI. And of course, we weren't getting very much support from our elected senators and representatives, with the exception of Benny Thompson. Benny supported us all the way through. My brother was able to get a <laughs> Benny Thompson did. Benny uh, Jefferson, the man out of Louisiana that went to jail for having the money in the refrigerators, in the deep freeze. <laughs> he supported us. He wrote letters to Janet Reno requesting that the federal uh, FBI files be turned loose. And so eventually the FBI files were turned loose, were opened up and free with, at that time, the one that they just appointed to investigate the Penn State incident, free was over the FBI. And I remember us going to Jackson, Mississippi to the FBI office and free was there and they gave us the files. So then that was not an excuse that could be used that they couldn't get the FBI files. There were hurdles like that along the way and we tried for years and years and years. And finally, uh, young people like you, uh, came forward and maybe somebody that was younger when the Klan was doing these things had a change of heart. Uh, one Bob, can't remember Bob's name off the coast, he's dead now. He has since committed suicide. The guy that came forward and gave additional evidence because they kept telling us they could not prosecute the case unless they had new evidence. So Bob, whose name I cannot remember, came forward. He was in an AA program, a 12-step program. And part of that, I think, is you have to make amends to people that you have feel like you have wronged. Bob came forth, and he was willing to give new evidence. So we were able to proceed at that time. But it was done under Lindsey Carter here in Hattiesburg. Did I answer your question? Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Did you ever have a hard time at school? Uh, in, in what way, baby, do you mean? No, no. Uh, I grew up in a segregated society. In 1966, 
all the schools were segregated. I lived in a black world, in a black community. Uh, there was some problems when schools were integrated in 1970, but I wasn't singled out. In particular, all black children were treated bad at that time. You know, they didn't treat me any worse because my name was Betty Damer, is what I'm saying. All black children uh, were treated bad at that time. Um, the first day we went to school at North Forest, the, a lot of white parents marched. They did not want us there, nigga, go home. But there were about 30 white students that did come and were there. But of course, I graduated from North Forest. I graduated from North Forest with honors, you know, because education is not something that can be That was something that was always instilled, you know. My mother was a school teacher, and, you know, the best was the only thing that was accepted at my house, you know. That was it. Did I answer your questions, Blake? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. It's not the same floor plan. Uh, the barn that we uh, escaped to is still there. Uh, there are more houses around 796 Monroe Road now because Daddy was a farmer. And where you see all of the Damer houses was hogs and cotton and everything else. Uh, and now that's in the city. That's in the city. That's in the county. That's in the county. Uh -huh. so, okay, it's not in the city. Like no, it's not in the city. Like We're still there. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, Betty, you have in this room a, no a number of civil rights activists. The McGees are here. And yes. Fought, the, fought for voter registration. Um, I know the McGees quite well. Walter is here, the first state black trooper. I know trooper. Walter quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm, my question really is, and I'm sure there's other people whom I don't know as well, but my question is, looking at today, to what extent do you see changes, and to what extent do you see not enough changes? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to answer it. Um, we have opportunities today. We have the right to get up and vote. Nobody's going to come bomb your house because you decided to go vote. Uh, we, we're always going to have discrimination. As long as you have people, you're going to have discrimination. But as a people, we came out of slavery, and we have made it thus far through discrimination. So I don't think that's a, that's a legitimate, to me, it's not a legitimate right. That someone saying that they discriminated against me. If slaves can make it as far as we may have made it to now, we've always been discriminated against. So my thing is that as a people, we need to continue to try to try to increase our knowledge about the situation that's going on. We need to educate our young people, make sure that they are aware of our past so that we will not continue to allow things like this to occur. 
Did I answer your question? In, in part. I'm just wondering also, do you see any lingering racism in of this course. community today or not? Of course. There will always be discrimination and you know there will always be racism. Uh, now let me say this. Uh, as a teenager, because of what happened to me, I hated all white people. You know, but as I grew and acquired more sense and kept listening to my mother, you know, I learned that all white people are not evil, and I also know all black people are not good. But, you know, the way that you learn these things is by intermingling and interacting with each other. Did that help? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> well, if there, you know, 